શ્રી સ્વામિનારાયણ ભગવાનની જય અક્ષર પુરુષોત્તમ મહારાજની જય પ્રમુખ સ્વામી મહારાજની જય મહંત સ્વામી મહારાજની જય પ્રમુખ સ્વામી મહારાજ શતાબ્દી મહોત્સવની જય વી આર કરન્ટલી સ્ટડીંગ પ્રમુખ સ્વામી મહારાજ જીવન ચરિત્ર પાર્ટ વન સેશન વી વિલ બી ફોકસિંગ ઓન અસેસમેન્ટ ખે નાઉ નાઉ ધ નોટ્સ uh have been given in in english as well and they can be downloaded from the mybaps app the notes have also been sectioned such that you can also listen to it in gujarati if you want because the, the track name the track numbers have also been given now we will start over here with k21 swami shri had uh, begun extensive vicharan in the villages of jalavad in the jalavad region basically to raise funds for the painting of the sarangpur mandir we discussed this in the previous sessions how uh, everybody wanted to you know paint the mandir but there weren't enough funds nevertheless nevertheless a pramukh sai maharaj agreed to that and now he has started his vicharan and the travels in order to raise these funds as well and so during this uh, travels he visited limbri pandri sejakur सेजकपुर नवागाम मोजीदड़ कंथारिया चचाणा अचारडा खारवा वडवान जोरावरनगर सुरेंद्रनगर एंड मेनी अदर विलेजेस इन दैट एरिया नाउ द डिवोटीज ऑफ जालावड वर वेरी वेरी सपोर्टिव ऑफ दिस इनिशिएटिव एंड दे आल्सो डोनेटेड वेरी जेनरसली फॉर सारंगपुर मंदिर फॉर द पेंटिंग बेसिकली एंड ऑन वन ओकेजन ड्यूरिंग अ सत्संग सभा इन लिंबड़ी Hari Prakash Swami he was uh, there's a very nice incident in this uh, chapter over here where in the middle of the sabha Hari Prakash Swami was preparing malpura in the kitchen now the the batter for the malpura was not prepared correctly and so he was struggling to make it properly and it just so happened that Pramukh Sai Maharaj uh, walked into the kitchen at that time and immediately you know he saw what was happening and he understood exactly what hari prakash swami's dilemma was because they showed him you know he showed him what was happening and so pramukh sai maharaj then very uh, nicely reassured hari prakash swami you know not to worry and to take it easy and then he began to guide him and swami said here let me you know let me show you how to do this and let me put you out of your trouble and your misery and with these words swami she then sat down on the floor firstly swami shri mended the batter of the malpura and then he adjusted the uh, intensity of the heat and the amount of ghee that was required in the pan and then he gradually started to make the malpura and simultane- simultaneously he started teaching hari prakash swami how to you know gradually turn the batter into malpura now swami shri spent almost half an hour with him and helped him make perfect malpuras once he had learned how to make the malpuras then swami shri returned to the sabha and now it was his turn to address the assembly obviously the devotees sitting in the sabha probably had no idea that swami shri had just been teaching a, a sadhu how to make malpura so a very interesting incident in this uh, in this chapter and one thing we can see in the image over here how pramukh sai maharaj used to jump in to help all the sadhus in the kitchen at some and many a time even in the previous sessions we we saw or we learned about how swami shri taught uh, puja gansham swami how to make uh, khichdi at that time so swami was a very very he was so multi talented you know in so many areas and so many different fields but we can see this even in kitchen he had very good uh, very good skills as far as cooking was concerned and obviously while he was um, available to help and everything oh, he was such a good expertise he had but he also made himself very available to help and guide other people let's move on to k22 now swami shri you know then departed to go to gondal to help for the preparations for the upcoming festivities of the sharad punam festival and in a note in his daily journal on the 22nd of october Pramukh Sai Maharaj writes Tamam utarama jai nar electric temaj saaf sufi ni tapas jajru bathroom ni saaf sufi vagere badi che ke nahi 
તે તપાસ કરી છે તે અંગે સૂચનાઓ હી વોઝ વેરી વેરી મટીક્યુલસ હી રાઇઝ ઇન હિઝ ડાયરી દેટ આઈ વોન્ટ ટુ ચેક ઓલ ધી એકોમોડેશન ફેસિલિટીઝ આઈ ચેક ધ ટેપ્સ ધ ઇલેક્ટ્રિસિટી ધ ક્લેનલીનેસ ચેક વધર ધ બાથરૂમ્સ એન્ડ ધ ટોયલેટ્સ વર ક્લીન એક્સેટ્રા એન્ડ ધન હી ગેવ રેલેવન્ટ ઇન્સ્ટ્રક્શન્સ એઝ વેલ તે અંગે સૂચનાઓ આપી સ્વામી વોઝ વેરી વેરી મટીક્યુલસ વેન હી કેમ ટુ મેકિંગ શ્યોર દેટ હરી ભક્તો વર વેલ લુક્ડ આફ્ટર and this was a huge reflection of his love and care for the hari bhaktos and this is something that we many of us might have noticed throughout you know even in the late years when santos or hari bhaktos when there were big festivals pramukh sai maharaj would make sure that he would ask ke bada utarani vyavastha barabar thai gayi che not just that sometimes swami would send other sadhus to go and inspect if everything was still clean and spick and span and ready for all the hari bhaktos and um, adarsh even so he writes very nicely in the jivan charitra that just as a mother tends to the needs of her own child swami she tended to every aspect of his devotees personally he indeed served more like a mother to the thousands of devotees therefore he was always keen and excited to make the best arrangements for them again a lot of motherly love expressed in the life of pramukh sai maharaj let's move on to k23 So Yogi ji Maharaj now flew into Rajkot from Mumbai to celebrate the Sharad Poonam festival in Gondal. Pramukh Sai Maharaj was there at the airport to receive Yogi Bapa and then he escorted him to Gondal you know by a car in a car. The 185th birth anniversary of Gunadyan Swami was grandly and devoutly celebrated in the presence of Yogi ji Maharaj. This again in Gondal. Now during the main celebration Sabha Yogi ji Maharaj had to leave after the first aarti. to take rest as we mentioned earlier that yogi papa's health was not too well and so swami ji then stayed back for the rest of the sabha now two days later when yogi ji maharaj addressed the sabha in gondal pramukh sai maharaj noted a very memorable ob- observation in his daily journal swami ji writes pramukh sai maharaj writes puje swami ji e aaje mandwad pachi be maase pravachan apyu interestingly what he says Pujya Swami ji meaning Pujya Yogi ji Maharaj delivered a discourse today for the first time after 2 months of sickness it's incredible how Swami ji took even minute details and noted these kind of things you know we often talk about taking lab and how to note down things but this is something we saw in the lives of the paramanses and this note just shows how observant Pramukh Sai Maharaj was when taking notes of every action of his guru in fact it's a very powerful reflection of his of his uh, guru bhakti Let's move on to K24. On one occasion in Gondal, Yogi Ji Maharaj had darshan of Bhagat Ji Maharaj in his dream. Yogi Bapa would often get these kind of dreams and you know he would also like to narrate uh, these dreams. We see this in Pujya Mahan Sai Maharaj as well. Mahan Sai Maharaj often has uh, lots of dreams of Yogi Ji Maharaj and Pramukh Sai Maharaj and almost every other day you get a chance to hear Swami says these kind of uh, prasangs about his dreams. So Yogi Ji Maharaj was so ecstatic about this dream. And so whoever he met, he would excitedly describe the details to them. And Yogi Bapa said ke aaje to sakshat darshan didha. Orda ma patla upar bethela. Sakshat meaning he is talking about Bhagat Ji Maharaj. Aaje to Bhagat Ji Maharaj sakshat darshan didha. Orda ma patla par bethela. Nai dhoi puja karine. Kapaad ma tilak chanlo hato. દોડું ધોત્યું પહેર્યું હતું ને ઉપર ધોડું વસ્ત્ર ઓડ્યું હતું માથે ફેંટો બાંધેલો રૂડા રૂપાળા લાગતા હતા કપારમાંથી તેજ નીકળતું હતું શું તેજસ્વી મૂર્તિ મેં દનવત કર્યા ઘણે વખતે દર્શન દીધા મને શાંતિ થઈ ગઈ ઇન્ક્રેડિબલ હાઉ યોગી બાપા ડિસ્ક્રાઇબ્સ હિઝ હિઝ ડ્રીમ of how he had bhagat ji maharaj in his dream that you know today bhagat ji maharaj himself gave me darshan you know he was sitting on a wooden platform in a room after completing you know his his uh, morning rituals and doing puja there was a tilak chal on his forehead he had worn a white dhoti and a white upper garment he wore traditional headgear on his hair on his head and he appeared extremely pleasant and then swami writes one very nice thing i offered danvats interestingly even in his dream Yogi ji Maharaj never forgot to do his uh, dhanvats dhan, and offer his bhakti to Bhagat ji Maharaj like this and he writes i felt immense peace atyanta shanti thai gayi you know yogi ji maharaj was so ecstatic that when he sat down for breakfast 
then he sat and he asked dev charan swami dev charan swami was pramukh swami maharaj's jod sant he was always accompanying pramukh swami maharaj so then yogi baba asked dev charan swami ki do you ever have such uh, such darshan and dev charan swami says uh, no baba i mane nahi evo darshan thata and yogi baba says lyo guru khara chho ne pramukh swami e shastri ji maharaj nu swarup ane shastri ji maharaj ma bhagat ji maharaj rahela ke nahi yogi baba says oh guru what do you mean pramukh swami is the manifest form of shastri ji maharaj does bhagat ji maharaj not reside in shastri ji maharaj hinting that yes you have also seen bhagat ji maharaj and so yogi uh, dev charan swami goes yes swami baba he does to pramukh swami na darshan ma bhagat ji maharaj aavi jaye aavi na no par aavi na no padai you know so he saying that yes you must say that bhagat ji maharaj ma pramukh sai maharaj na darshan thai jaye che pramukh sai maharaj ma bhagat ji maharaj na darshan thai jaye che please never say no again like this to me yogi ji maharaj logically explained uh, swami shri's my mind this way yogi baba then served some dhebra from his thar to puja dev charan swami and then he asked him to go and give it to swami shri to go and give it to pramukh sai maharaj and he said to dev charan swami you must please pramukh swami by serving him samjhya pramukh sai maharaj ni seva kari ne raji karjo now there is another nice mention in the same chapter about pramukh sai maharaj's journal now moving on when we read pramukh sai maharaj's journal it says a lot about him on the 1st of november pramukh sai maharaj writes today thakur ji was adorned with a white surwal and on top of the white clothes was a red bandi right coat uh, a red koti and a white topi such was the dress now there was nothing extraordinary about the way ganshyam maharaj was dressed in this murti in gondal but nevertheless pramukh sai maharaj uh, makes a note of it so there must be something special that uh, that caught his eye and so you know they often say beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder and i guess this is probably why pramukh sai maharaj made a made a note of this and interestingly enough among so many pages of swami shri's daily journal this seems to be the only entry with such a description of maharaj's uh, murti and only he knows the reason for why he noted this eventually pramukh sai maharaj then uh, departed from gondal to go to sarangpur for diwali uh, diwali and the ankot celebrations let's move on to k25 now after the ankot celebrations in sarangpur Pramukh Sai Maharaj then traveled to Kantharia where there was a 3 day parayan that had been organized now as part of his uh, normal routine in those days Pramukh Sai Maharaj would deliver discourses in the mornings and the evenings on the fourth chapter of the Swami Nivato wherever he visited this was the standard uh, katha that he would deliver in, in these surrounding villages now during the remaining time he would conduct padra- padramnis in and around Kantharia Now on one of the days while San Swami was uh, doing katha Pramukh Sai Maharaj happened to walk past the kitchen and he noticed a sadhu preparing puris in the kitchen so Swami she noticed that the sadhu he needed some help to fry the puris and so he found an empty um, oil can he turned it upside down and Swami used that can as a stool and then he sat on it and began to help the sadhu with frying the puris now we've consistently seen this on so many occasions where swami shri was always on the lookout for an opportunity to do seva and to help anyone else who needed it at that time and this was yet another such another incident another occasion where pramukh sai maharaj grabbed the opportunity to help the sant uh, frying the puris now at that same time there was a youth named uh, baldev si he witnessed this entire incident and he he made a note of it the ease and humility with which swami shri sat down uh just on a simple can like this and started helping the sadhus deeply touched his heart and gradually he came closer and closer in contact with pramukh sai maharaj and swami shri's mahima touched him so much that later he became a sadhu and you know after he took diksha his name was he was pramukh sai maharaj had named him sadhu yagna priyadas and he dedicated his entire life for puja uh, pramukh sai maharaj today puja yagna priya swami currently serves in uh, in the amdavad mandir now as soon as the 
puris had been fried and they were ready, Pramukh Sai Maharaj prepared um, Thakurji's thar and he took the dish into the next room. So he picked up the thar and, and he walked a little quickly to the next room. Now the door frame leading into the room was a little low and Swami Sri in a little haste misjudged its height and he hit his head against the door frame. And as a result, there was a, there was a loud sudden thud that everybody heard. Heard and so they all ran to help. Naturally, they ran to help Swami Shri. You know, naturally they were all very concerned. Uh, but Swami Shri was very much unfazed. You know, and he told them not to make a big deal about it, not to worry about it. On the contrary, he said, "Look, just be. Let's keep it quiet. Since Swami is still doing the katha, he didn't want to create a commotion or anything like that. And which is again very typical of Pramukh Sai Maharaj, never wanting to create any sort of a commotion when something like this happens. We'll see many such other incidences as we read, as we read on." So anyway, the collision uh, left a bump on Swami Shri's forehead. Um, but he just carried on his work as if nothing had happened. And he placed the thar in front of Thakurji and then happily rejoined the Puri in, uh, in, in, in the Puri making Seva. Now we can see uh, an image over here of Sadhu Yagna Priyadas uh, getting blessings from Puja Mahan Sai Maharaj. Let's move on to K26. So after the Parayan in Kantharya, Swamishi then continued his vichran to Valbipur, Bhavnagar, Gadda, Ningada and then made his way to Amdavad for the festival of Prabodhini Ekadashi. And from there he continued his vichran to Vaso, Dabhan and then eventually to Bochasan. In Bochasan, Swami celebrates the Kartik Purnima event. Now that Yogiji Maharaj you know, could no longer travel extensively, it was Pramukh Sai Maharaj who shouldered all the responsibility of all the festive celebrations, the Parayans, the Patramnis, all the Sansa related meetings, attending to special occasions. You know, not only that, but along with all this was the Mandir construction project. So all this fell upon Pramukh Sai Maharaj. And Yogiji Maharaj was extremely pleased with the way Pramukh Sai Maharaj was handling all these tasks. And on one occasion, when Yogiji Maharaj woke up in the morning, he spontaneously started speaking in front of the Sevaks who were in front of him. And he said, Pramuk Swami Maharaj, Pramuk Swami Ekla Padigaya, Bo Dakro Kareche, Seva Laveche, To Tomo Kagar Lako. Now here Pramuk Sai Maharaj talks about. Yogiji Maharaj talks about Pramukh Sai Maharaj and he says, okay, look, let's, uh, let's write a letter to him. And with these words, Yogiji Maharaj then asked the Sevaks to write to Pramukh Sai Maharaj and to update him on the matters of what's actually happening in Gondal regarding the, all the other projects and also that, but he also wanted to talk about, um, express what is happening regarding his own health. So this was something, a very nice incident that took place uh, in the now, after celebrating the festival of Dev, Ek, Dev Diwari on that Purnima day in Bochasan on the 23rd of November 1969, Pramukh Sai Maharaj travelled extensively to raise uh, paddy donations in Dharmaj, Paraj, Radu, Dabhan, Nadiad, Pij, Limbasi, Traj, Matar and many other villages in that area. And then finally, he made his way to Sokhra which is in the Matar area. Now there was a devotee by the name of Purshottam Das from the village of Sokhra and he had once requested Yogiji Maharaj to visit his village. Yogi Baba had agreed to his request but in order to organize a visit to this village it was necessary to get uh, permission from Jashpai. Now Jashpai was the, the village chief and he was a, a tough fortress to breach. He had an aversion to all sadhus and sannyasis. He, in fact, he firmly believed that all sadhus and sannyasis just took tobacco and marijuana and would contaminate the villages and its residents. And so he never wanted to entertain any sadhus or sannyasis in the village. Nevertheless, um, Purushottam Bhai very apprehensively put forth this proposal of Yogiji Maharaj's visit. And naturally, as expected, you know, the response was very, very negative. And, you know, he was. Uh, very rough and very rude in the way he said it that I was not going to let any sadhus or bhavas enter my village. But Purushottam Bhai you know, was a little persistent 
Very calmly, he explained the Mahima of Yogiji Maharaj. And then eventually, Jashbhai very begrudgingly agreed uh, for Yogi Baba to come to the village. He didn't want to, but just out of respect, then he went on to say yes. Now, the next challenge was that of arranging Yogiji Maharaj's accommodation. And it just happened that the finest house in the entire village was that of Jashbhai's. So once again, Purushottam Bhai requested him to allow Yogi Ji Maharaj to stay at his own house for two days. You can imagine this Purushottam Bhai. He must be very, um, very passionate about his, plus uh, and dedicated in the way he actually approached this, that you know someone who was completely against Yogi Bapa or the sadhus, not only did he allow him to come into the village, but he also had the, the courage to walk up to him and ask him if he could use his house um, for accommodation. So Jashpa immediately declined the proposal saying, look, that's never going to happen. He goes, I give you an inch and then you're asking for a mile. Purushottam Bhai, you know, bless him, was so genuine and persistent in the way uh, he kept on approaching Jashpai. Eventually, Jashpai gave in to him. But then he had some conditions attached to this. Jashpai said that, look, I myself will move out of the, of the house to some other place in the village. Do not call me for darshan for any of these bhavas. Do not ask me to fold hands in front of them. And after your sadhus leave, make sure you clean the house of all the tobacco and the marijuana stains. Only then hand it back to me. <laughs> now it just so happened that Yogi Bapa was unable to visit Sokhara because of his uh, poor health at that time. And so then Yogi Ji Maharaj just announced that Pramukh Swami Amari Jagya Yavse. And when he comes, believe it as if I have come. Amari Jagya Pramukh Swami Maharaj Yavse, Ame Avya Ayu Barabar Tame Manjo. Now as planned, Pramukh Swami Maharaj's residence was arranged at Jashpai's house. While Swamiji stayed there at his house for two days, Jashpai did not even come once to meet Pramukh Sai Maharaj. Two days later, while Swami was in Sokhara, when it was time for Swamiji to leave, Swami again asked if it was possible to meet the owner of the house. You know, Swami actually inquired, who's the owner of the house? I've been here for two days, but no one has actually introduced him to me. And so someone said, Swami Jashpa is the, the village chief. So then Bapa said, uh, Pramukh Swami said, so where is he? You know, shouldn't you at least introduce him to me? And naturally, you know, Pramukh Swami had this tendency, obviously for anyone to meet them uh, when he went to their houses. Now, when Swami insisted on this, uh, Purushottam Bhai then explained the predicament. And he explained how Jashpai was, you know, has a deep dislike for sadhus. And so he won't come. And then he said that, Swami, if we insist that he comes, I'm afraid that he might even insult you. Now, you know, the more Josh, the more um, Purushottam Bhai became stronger, you could see that Pramukh Sai Maharaj's insistence also strengthened. And then Pramukh Sai Maharaj said, look, go ahead and try. Let's see, let's see what happens, you know. And so a few of the devotees approached Jashpai and they told him that Pramukh Sai Maharaj wanted to meet him. Jashpai was not happy with his request. And so he declined the request. And he said, look, I told you not to call me to meet your sadhus. Just go away. I don't want to come. Again, with a little bit of persuasion, he finally agreed and he came to meet Swamishi. Now he was raging with anger when he came to see Swamishi. However, as soon as he came face to face with Bapa, he completely calmed down. Not only that, he actually bowed down to Swamishi's feet. And then he said, Bhagwan, you stayed for two days at my house. Can't you stay for two more days? What a contrast. He addressed Pramukh Sai Maharaj as Bhagwan. Swami, Tame Bhagwan Sho. Tame Haji Bedivas Mara Ghare Rokao. You know, you could see that Swami was the, the effect that Pramukh Sai Maharaj had on Jashpai. Everyone who was there was absolutely shocked to see the sudden change in Jashpai. You know, after this, after this incident, Jashpai, you know, became. Gradually, you know, his life transformed and from that day onwards, his life took a new turn. You know, he became a satsangi. Uh, he began performing regular puja. He began attending uh, daily satsang sabhas at the local mandir. In fact, he would spend his entire day at the mandir. Only then in the evening, he'd go back home for something to eat. Eventually, he became so engrossed in mandir and seva, he would actually arrange uh, for his food to be delivered home, uh, delivered to the mandir. And he'd still carry on doing his seva by staying there throughout the day. Jashpai served in the satsang till his last breath. And this was another miracle, not of just Swamishi's words, but even just Swamishi's mere presence. You know, we'd say that 
uh, a true transformation we could see in the life of uh, Jashpai just by one interaction with Pramukh Sai Maharaj. Let's move on to K20 now. So from Sokra, Swamishi then visited Kheda and he went to Anand. Mani by Naran by son was getting married in Anand. And so Swami was there just to bless, bless him on this occasion. Hari Bhaktas had so much affinity for Pramukh Sai Maharaj that they would always want him to be present to bless them during such significant um, life events. Many Hari Bhaktas have had the fortune where Pramukh Sai Maharaj may have visited them during their um, such a, uh, their weddings or similar events like that. And so from there, Swami then continued his return to Nondana. Hari Bhaktas in Nondana had built a mandir, but Yogi Bapa was unable to visit uh, visit them for the Pratishta. So they they took the Murtis to Gondal, where Yogi Ji Maharaj then performed the Pujan and the Aarti of the Murtis in Akshadeiri. Yogi Bapa then sent Pramukh Sai Maharaj to Nondana, where he performed the Pratishta of the Murtis on the 14th of uh, December. Now, after the Pratishta event in Nondara, Swamishi then went to Vasad and then made his way to Varodhara. And on the 16th of December, Makshar Sud Atham, Pramukh Sai Maharaj was in Varodhara. Now, Mani Bhai of Salad was a very close friend of Pramukh Sai Maharaj. And so he was also present in uh, Baroda at that time. And he reminded everybody that today is Makshar Sud Atham. Today is the birth anniversary of Pramukh Sai Maharaj. Now, Swamishi was at uh, Dulabhai's place at that time. And so everyone then, you know, they arranged a small assembly. And for those of us who've known Pramukh Sai Maharaj, you can just imagine this was something that he would never want to entertain. Nevertheless, he had to succumb to the love and the affection of the Hari Bhaktos. And so you know, they arranged a small assembly in honor of Swamishi's 49th uh, birth anniversary. You know, everyone talked about Swamishi's greatness and virtues. And on this occasion, they also raised um, funds to paint the Atladra Mandir. Now we can see a lot of other works going on. The painting of Sarangpur Mandir along with uh, Atladra Mandir also taking place over here as well. So then from Atladra, Swamishi then travelled to uh, Bochasan, Medao, Vartal, Kheda, Shantipura and finally made his way to Naika. Swami was then scheduled to visit uh, Shrijipura from Naika. Now the Sansta did not have cars in those days. And so the Hari Bhaktas had arranged for Swami to continue his vichran in a car that belonged to the village Tadati. Now during this vichran, Swamishi found out you know, Swamishi then found out that a few sadhus uh, who were traveling with him, they needed to go to Bochasan from Shijipura. And Swami was very quick to help them out. Immediately, Swami gave his car, you know, the car that the Tadati had given to the sadhus and Swami actually opted to walk from Naika to Shrijipura. You know, Swami had always lived with this, the motto of in the joy of others lies our own. And this was just another example of the sacrifices that Swami would regularly make for others. You know, Swami gave the car up for the sadhus to go to Bochasan and he himself then chose to walk from uh, Naika to Shrijipura. And then from then onwards, Swami she traveled to Chitrasar, Dharoda and Mahijra. But the mode of transport had completely changed. He now traveled in an open tractor for the rest of the Vichran. So we can see that Swami is uh, blessing the tractor over here. This probably isn't the tractor, it's just an image. But we can imagine the way Swami would travel. He gave up his car. And for those of us who've actually traveled in tractors in India, it's not a very comfortable uh, journey. Now let's move on to K29. Now a very nice and heartwarming incident took place on the 31st of December 1969. It was the last day of the year. And Swami was still traveling in that same open tractor. Swami was traveling from traveling to Chitrasar. Now there was a person by the name of uh, Kima Bharwad. And while Swami was traveling in the tractor, he stopped Bapa midway and he stood in front of the tractor. So everyone accompanying Swami, she wondered what the shepherd actually wanted. Soon it became very clear that Kima Bharwad had requested Pramukh Sai Maharaj to visit and bless his humble hut. Now, without the slightest of hesitation, Pramukh Sai Maharaj happily honored his invitation. Interesting to see how Swami was so approachable. You know, despite being the leader of such a sansta and, you know, such a famous, you know, he was well-known, well-renowned. Yet even the shepherds who were traveling in the middle of the road could stop Swami's car and request him 
to come and visit his village, uh, his hut. And not only that, and Pramukh Sai Maharaj, so flexible and so readily way, uh, made himself available to go and visit uh, the Hari Bhakta's house. He wasn't even a Hari Bhakta, just someone that Swami met on route. So Swami, she then visited um, Kima Bharwad's uh, hut. Kima was over the moon to have someone like Pramukh Sai Maharaj visit his hut. He didn't have much to offer, but it was his warm hospitality that won everyone's hearts. This was the final Padramni of 1969. Pramukh Sai Maharaj chose a humble hut, not some majestic mandir or a mansion to spend the last day of 1969. The next section we will be covering, uh, we're moving into 1970 and we are looking at uh, K30. So on the 1st of January 1970, Pramukh Sai Maharaj was still traveling in an open air, open tractor in the rural areas of Gujarat, Chitrasar, Shijipura, Navagam, Balyapuras, Sankhej, Nenpur, all this just to raise paddy donations for the Sansta. Now, when traveling from one village to another, sometimes he would even travel in a cart, which is pulled by oxen. Again, very typical of Pramukh Sai Maharaj's vichran back in those days. Now, there was a youth by the name of Bardev who lived in Nenpur. It's funny how this village that was hardly heard of in the past, and now after 2020, it catches everyone's ears. Every time the name Nenpur is mentioned. So anyway, there was this youth by the name of Bardev who lived in the village of Nenpur. He had just graduated with an MSc degree in chemistry but was unable to secure a job. So his father then spoke to Pramukh Sai Maharaj. It seems like Pramukh Sai Maharaj was always the default uh, helpline for so many Hari Bhaktos. So then Swamishi called Bharadev the following day and he asked him and he told him, look, there's a devotee by the name of uh, Keshav Chandra Amin in Mumbai. He's a director of a company named uh, Alembic. Swami then said, look, I will write a note of recommendation for you. You go meet him and he'll help you out. So the Bardev, you know, had said to Swami, Swami, I've never been to uh, Mumbai before. He was very apprehensive about this. And Pramukh Swami goes, Ema you know, all you need to do is you board a train, board the Gujarat mail train from Ahmedabad and then just deboard at the other station. And our mandir is right opposite, opposite the station. <laughs> very interesting how... Casually, Swami just guided uh, this. So anyway, uh, Bardev then followed the instructions that were given by Swami Shri and made it very safely to Mumbai. And with some help from the local sadhus, he met with the director of the pharmaceutical company. He was interviewed and eventually offered a job. For the next 33 years, he served in that same company. It's interesting how with just a single note for Pramukh Sai Maharaj, the entire life of that youth took a huge turn. You know, like so many other Hari Bhaktos, Bharadev would never forget, would never be able to forget the genuine care and support that Swamishi gave at each and every stage of his life. From Nenpur, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then made, way, made his way to Gondal. We now look at K31. So Pramukh Sai Maharaj was in Gondal on the auspicious day of Uttarayan on the 14th of January. Now usually on this day, the sadhus would travel around the town and the villages with their jodis to beg for arms. Now a jodi is like a, a cloth bag that is used for collecting arms. Swamishi very keenly wanted to join the sadhus. But out of concern, everyone then insisted that Swami, you should stay back. Uh, there's no need for you to take this unnecessary strain. Remember that Swami had uh, they just wanted to make sure that Swami would still stay back. So then Swami, she had to stay back at the mandir. Now, as they say, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. And Pramukh Sai Maharaj was asked not to walk the streets of Gondal to beg for Jodi. So he found another way to beg and offer his seva. He proceeded to every single room in the mandir accommodation. And there were several Hari Bhaktos from out of town that were in these, uh, that were in these rooms. They were staying over there. So typical of this, Swami would actually walk up to those doors, knock on the doors, and Swami also called out the Jodi, you know, Swami Narayan Hare, Satchidanan Prabhu, at every single room. The Hari Bhaktas were so excited. What an unexpected sight to have, you know, Swami Shri knocking on your doors 
asking for jodi so the hari bhaktas were so excited and so to see this unexpected sight of pramukh sai maharaj standing at their doorsteps you know asking for jodi and to see swami with a jodi slung on his shoulder the devotees did not have grains to donate on this day but then they flooded swami shri's jodi with lots of seva donations um again making the most of uh, a once in a lifetime opportunity now that evening yogi ji maharaj and swami shri eventually left for rajkot and they celebrated the occasion of uttrayan in rajkot now since yogi ji maharaj and pramukh sai maharaj were soon to depart for an overseas satsang tour wherever they went devotees would arrange a farewell ceremony for them so from rajkot yogi ji maharaj and pramukh sai maharaj then traveled to bhadra now bhadra is such a small village but wherever yogi ji maharaj and pramukh sai maharaj went there was a huge crowd that would also follow them and so over 500 devotees flocked for yogi bapa's darshan and lab in uh, in bhadra uh, which is not very surprising anymore but obviously back in the day to see 500 people in bhadra was was quite a huge number let's move on to k32 so from bhadra yogi bapa then uh traveled to rajkot and then flew to mumbai on the morning of 17th of january 1970 and then pramukh sai maharaj he made his way to amdavad now as soon as swami shri got to amdavad yogi baba called him for some work and asked him to come to mumbai immediately so the next day which is on the 18th of january pramukh sai maharaj then boarded the shaurashtra mail train from amdavad and got to mumbai the following morning Swami Shri completed the necessary work that same day and then departed back to Ahmedabad via train on the 20th of the Jan- on the 20th of January. Now it's uh, interesting to see this prasang because Yogi Bapa left they split from Bhavnagar or uh, from Gondal on the 17th from Rajkot. They split on the 17th. Yogi Bapa could have easily said Pram- to Pramukh Sai Maharaj why don't you accompany me? Nevertheless something happened and on the 18th the next day Swami went to Ahmedabad and then from Ahmedabad to mumbai they could have gone together but we can see how flexible pramukh sai maharaj was not only that but at the wish of yogi ji maharaj he would drop everything just to go and entertain and make sure that uh, he could follow yogi baba's agna for yogi ji maharaj he knew that he could count on swami shri's support even at the last minute you know whenever a complicated situation arose yogi ji maharaj would always invariably guide everyone pramukh sai ne pucho ask pramukh swami and do whatever he says yogi ji maharaj had so much trust in swami shri's proficiency and ability to deliver any sort of task swami was always um, and and swami shri also always delivered and proved worthy of yogi baba's trust on every single occasion and as soon as the work was done in mumbai pramukh sai maharaj then headed back for amdavad so after a two day stay in amdavad swami shri then went to daban to celebrate the festival of poshi punam and then swami went off to bochasan and then from bochasan swami went to petlad the reason for going to petlad was to inspect a piece of land for the construction of a new hari mandir now swami would often say that god cannot be worshiped without an appropriate place ek sari jagya hoy to bhagwan bhajwano sukh apanne aave and therefore from the very beginning swami she was very much inclined towards building a mandirs and places of worship and we can see that he's done this in as many villages today as possible and this was one of the reasons that swami shri took such a keen interest in all aspects that were related to a mandir's construction which ranged from searching for the land to the smallest construction details and as a result of swami shri's persistent efforts petlad was finally gifted with a beautiful divine mandir and uh, that ends our session for today shri swaminarayan bhagwanani Jay.